up guys, it's Jock Slade and today Nike released the Kobe 11 and I wanted to give you a closer look at the shoe and also point out three things that I think are really going to make a difference as far as performance of the shoe goes. So this is less of an unboxing sort of thing and more of a look at the technology that's in the shoe. Let's work our way from the inside, basically from the inside out of the shoe. For the 11, designer Eric Avar took us back to the Kobe 7 with the drop in midsole. Now my first thought was been there and done that. There are some differences though with this version that you should know. The biggest difference is this toe area right here. The pattern that you see has been updated with a Nike free outsole like design and by adding it to the midsole, Eric and his team is trying to help reproduce that same feeling that you get when you wear a pair of Nike freeze but in a basketball shoe. For cushioning, Nike uses Lunar Lawn, which is basically the entire midsole, but they're supplementing it with Nike Zoom in the heel. Now, Lunar Lawn is there for its soft and responsive properties, and Zoom Unit is there for its maximum responsiveness. Now the second factor is the outsole. Nike Basketball has played with the outsole and different traction patterns and styles over the years. And that same philosophy continues with the Kobe 11. First thing to note is that the outsole is translucent. Basically you can see right through it. Now that is obviously just an aesthetic play on the shoe, but Nike is claiming that this traction pattern that they're using will work on a variety of different surfaces. The traction also changes. I noticed that when I was looking at taking a closer look at the shoe, that it changes on different areas of the outsole. If you looked at it, they made the outsole a bit thicker right here around the edges, especially on the lip here on the lateral side. Finally, the outsole actually connects directly to the fly knit upper. The final tech spec on the Kobe 11 is the upper. Nike brings back fly knit, but this implementation of the technology is a little different than anything we have seen up to this point. Previously, to reinforce the upper, Nike would use a fuse to fly knit backing here material that would help give it some stability. This time, Nike actually foregoes that process entirely and instead they weave in thermoplastic polyurethane threads into the actual fly knit, TPU is what it's usually called. Now, if you look closely, you can actually see that the threads go all the way through the upper and they add an almost reflective quality to the fly knit pattern. Just looking at them, you can see how much stronger they are than the traditional fly knit. And then along with the fly wire threads, which you can see right here, although they're kind of hidden on this colorway, it should keep you locked down pretty well. All things considered, the Kobe 11 does appear to sit a bit lower than past models and the cut at the ankle and right here at the heel, it reveals that same thought process. Considering this is Kobe's last on-court signature shoe, I can imagine that the storytelling for his new colorways are going to be pretty crazy. This large colorway is a nod to the Greek hero Achilles and Kobe's own injury, both being mostly unstoppable until an injury and their actual Achilles forced them to take the sidelines. All right, guys, now it's your turn. Now that you know more about the Kobe 11, do you think that you'll be picking up a pair? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Now, I am Jacques Slade. This is a hands-on look at the Kobe 11. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content just like this. Also, if you haven't already done it, give me a follow over on Snapchat, IG, and Twitter. It's all under the name Cousteau. I'll see you soon. Peace.